Parshas Va'era. This week's Parsha discusses near the beginning of the Parsha the bearers of the tradition. And it describes the, the various important people and their yichos, their lineage. Vayikach, so and so, es so and so, and took so and so a wife. Let's look at the phrasing. First, this is uh, Perk Vav, Pasuk Chav, that's 620. Vayikach Amram, es Yocheved Dodaso, lo Lisha. And Amram took Yocheved, his aunt, to him for a wife. Vayikach Amram. Now, Amram had Aaron and Moshe. So, Vayikach Aharon, es Elisheva, ben Aminadav, achos nachshon lo Lisha. And Aaron took Vayikach Aharon took Aharon. It doesn't translate well in English, but it's Vayikach Aharon. We're emphasizing the action first, and then the individual. Then when we get to the son of Aaron, we have Elazar. It does not say Vayikach Elazar es bas putiel. It says, the Elazar ben Aharon lokach lo mi benos putiel lo li isha vateled lo es pinchas. It's an inconsistent phrasing. First, it names Elazar. Elazar, the son of Aharon, took for himself of the daughters of Putiel. Why does it just say Bas Putiel? Why does it give her name? And who is Putiel? Lo li isha to him as a wife, vateled lo, and was born to him as Pinchas. So the Ramban asks a question, which is the same question we asked. Who's Putiel? We don't know. He's only mentioned once in all of Tanakh, and this is the time. So the Ramban asks, why do you even bother? Why do you bother mentioning the name of an individual who we don't know anything about? And you mention him only once. It's just a tag. It doesn't have a substantive meaning for us. The Ramban goes on to explain that that's perhaps why the Gemara in Masech Sota describes two aspects of Pinchas's uh, so, uh, existence. He was the son of Elazar and the son of the daughter of Putiel. What is Putiel? So there are two opinions in, in the Gemara. One of them is that it refers to an individual. Some say it's Yisro, some say it's somebody else. Shet pitem avi imo agolim That his mother's father, meaning his grandfather, let's say Yisro, or somebody else who did this, fattened cows, calves, as offerings for idol worship. Doesn't sound very nice. Why are we even saying that? And the other opinion in the Gemara is that it's referring to Yosef, Shepipet B'Yitzra, that he mocked or minimized or made light of his Yetzar Hara, his his inclination to sin. So there are these two aspects to his personality, or at least to his, to the name of his ancestors. And <clears throat> the Nitziv uh, says that this is coming to tell us that even though the daughter of Putiel was not Miuchesas, she wasn't well known, she didn't have a noble lineage, it was Putiel, a no name, or a one name that we never hear of again. But rather, he chose her not because of the uh, attraction of nobility, of prestige, of marrying somebody with Yichus, but rather somebody who could help him in his mission. And that is why he says the word lo, for him, appears three times in this verse. It says, Ve'elazor ben Aaron, lo'kach lo mibnos putiel, lo li'isha, Vateled lo espinchas. Lo means to him. In other words, this was fitting, a, a, a fit for El Ozar, as opposed to Yichus, which sometimes you have to uh, twist and bend to accommodate the individual because the individual is there because of who preceded her or him rather than who uh, she or he is. In this case, El Ozar picked somebody who was uh, going to contribute personality wise to the mission. Now, <clears throat> we have a question, another question, which is that in describing in, uh, in Sefer Bamidbar, in Parshas Pinchas, 
um, the Torah describes the reward that Pinchas gets for having acted zealously and killing somebody who committed an open and notorious act of licentiousness in, uh, in opposition, in, in transgressing the word of God. And Pinchas saw something that evidently nobody else saw. And he picked up a spear and he killed the perpetrators. And the Torah in Parshas Pinchas uh, ascribes greatness to Pinchas and, and, and Hashem speaking in the Torah says that I give Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron a Kohen Pinchas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, Kuhunas Shalom and Bris Shalom. So <clears throat> Rashi says, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron a Kohen. Rashi says, Lefi shohiyu hashvotim evazinokso. The other tribes were disparaging him. Hariosem, did you see Ben Puti Zeh, this son of a Puti? What does that mean? Puti El, the son of Puti. Shepitem avi amo, avi imo, agolim la boros kachovim, that his mother's father fattened calves for sacrificing to idols for Avodah Zorah. Vahorag nosi shevet mi Israel, and he killed a prince, an important person prince of a tribe in Israel. We see that this opinion in the Gemara is reflected in the popular disparaging of Pinchas. What's going on here? Why is it a positive thing? Or is it a positive thing? Maybe it's a negative thing. Well, the Sifse Kohen says, in, he notes the contrast to the usage of uh, the 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 Vayikach, Vayikach, that we said concerning Amram, concerning Aaron, and he says that, <clears throat> again, he emphasizes that Pinchas did not go after Yichus, but he went after the personal attributes. What were those personal attributes? Well, he knew from his wife's mother's father, Putio, that he did, he had this aspect of, uh, we'd say, a, a, a life that's not consistent with the life of Torah. Why would he choose that? He saw evidently something redemptive about her. And in fact, it turns out that historically speaking, only Pinchas responded to the call of the moment. Vayikach Romach Biodo. He took a spear. What is the spear made of? Says the Sifse Kohen. It's made of wood. The handle is made of wood. And the tip is made of metal, of iron. The iron is the iron of the cherev, of the sword. al That's Esav. That's not Yaakov. But sometimes Yaakov needs a cherev. Sometimes Yaakov needs that aspect of destruction that is not in our DNA. It's not who we are. It's not our natural inclination. But we have to have it. Pinchas had it. Pinchas had the combination of the mate, of the wood, of Aaron, which symbolized his spiritual leadership of the Jews, and the cherev, the barzel, of Yisro, Midyoni. He had this combination. And because he had this combination, he didn't sit there cowering and saying, oh my, somebody should do something, when he saw this licentious act in a flagrant delecto, in just uh, obvious transgression. But rather, he had the koach, he had the power of the cherev, and he had the power of the mate, he had the power of the sword, and he had the power of the spiritual stick combined. And as a result, he, and only he, was able, and in fact did, rise to the occasion. There are times where we have to step out of our comfort zone. There are times when instead of picking up the plowshares, we have to pick up the spear, or the gun, or the cannon, or the bomb. And we have to do what needs to be done L'shem Shemayim, for the sake of heaven. It's not a natural response on our part, but it's a response that we have to have. Pinchas saw this, others did not. Ashrenu, happy are the people who see this and use these kochos, use these powers. L'shem Shemayim, for the sake of heaven and for the protection of the people of Israel. Have a good chance.